Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening. An out of control bushfire has sent a huge plume of smoke over southern Tasmania and forced residents of the Derwent Valley to flee. The blaze is burning in inaccessible terrain in extreme heat and strong winds. Our reporter Michael Breen is in Ellendale now and joins us live. Michael, good evening. What's the latest on the fire and what are the conditions like there? Well, Louise, conditions are a lot calmer right now. It's probably about 10 degrees cooler than the peak of the heat that we saw here today, and it was it was very hot here. Uh, now, you can probably see behind me, uh, it's still very uh, thick with smoke here in the Derwent Valley, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was earlier today uh, when we even saw ash falling from the sky. Now, let's take a look at a map now uh, of where the fire exactly is. It's burning near the Gordon River, over 50 15,000 hectares. It's about 20 kilometres northwest of Medina and winds did push it towards the busy mountain biking town today. Let's take a look now at how the day unfolded. A giant plume of smoke comes from behind Mount Wellington this morning, an ominous sign on a day of severe fire danger. Closer to the source in the Derwent Valley, this is what residents faced. I was out mowing the lawn and I was like, you could see the glow of the, like the sun was unreal and it was like, yeah, wow. The pub at National Park forced to shut its doors as ash was falling from the sky. Um, we're just ready to move if we need to be. Um, that's about it really, yeah, we're just, just so just, uh, we've cancelled all our bookings for the day. Um, we're closed currently and yeah, we're just ready to, to move if needs be. Medina on alert as winds pushed the thick smoke. The big fear, embers setting the ground alight. So how are you guys preparing? What are you doing now? Um, getting me cat, staying inside and um, yeah, just waiting with some clothes and my pills and everything ready to go if we need Take to. Take a bag. And yeah. hopefully we won't need to. The small town is known as a mountain biking haven, but with a bushfire threat, staff and visitors were told to leave. Uh, well obviously there's a fire kind of directly to the southwest of us currently being managed by the fire service as we understand that fire is not currently under control so we've made the decision to, to close the park and basically in the process of getting guests and staff out of the area. Yeah. So what did it look like up there? Couldn't see. I thought visibility, Neil, what do you reckon? Oh, probably low. down to 100 metres visibility. You couldn't see the hills in the background. Uh, even you could look directly at the sun because it was that smoke that yeah. getting that thick. Nearby entrance to Mount Field closed off and people evacuated from the National Park. What we did this morning is we closed the alpine area of the National Park as a precautionary measure as part of our emergency response plan for the area. Then this afternoon when the fire behaviour at Gel River escalated, uh, a watch and act issue, uh, alert was issued and at that point we closed the remainder of the park and advised from space, the thick plume of smoke, ash and embers can be traced back to the wilderness surrounding the Gordon River. Inaccessible to firefighters who are on alert for any spot fires created by falling embers. The town of Ellendale, an eerie calm. The familiar scent of smoke for residents who were affected by bushfires six years ago. Oh, what's going on is just very smoky at the moment. We're just uh, prepping and filling up stock troughs and fish ponds and buckets and watering cans and getting out our ember whackers. And While the heat was choking in the Derwent Valley, a weather change bringing cooler temperatures wasn't entirely good news. That system bringing stronger winds that could have fanned the flames. But it could start new fresh fires that could impact rapidly. So um, whilst we're not finished today, we asked people to um, be active, look, um, look and make sure that they're, they're active about what's going on in their area if they live in those communities. But luckily the winds changed in the Derwent Valley's favour, pushing the wildfire back towards itself. And I guess you guys have been chatting to the fires as well, how good a yeah, job are they doing? They're doing a pretty good oh, job I think, awesome yeah. Job. Awesome they do. job. Yeah. And we return to Michael for some breaking news now. Michael, another fire has broken out. 
Yeah, that's right, Louise. Um, fire crews in the last hour have been responding to a, a small fire near the Meadowbank uh, Lake. Um, now, it is it is quite small, so it's not of too much concern, and there are a lot of crews there to deal with that one. Uh, we did speak to one resident, though, who thought that that small fire may have been deliberately lit, and uh, if, if that's the case on such a, a high fire danger day, that's a certainly very disappointing, Louise. It certainly is. Thanks for that. Michael Breen on the scene at Ellendale there. Meanwhile, parts of Tasmania have also sweltered through some of the hottest temperatures in years. Many opted for aircon and the cool comfort of home, while thousands chose to spend today's scorcher by the water. It was a case of keeping cool whichever way felt best. With the highest temperature a sweltering 40 degrees at Campania and the rest of the state in the high 20s and 30s, those holidaying in Tasmania said it felt more like Sydney. Me and my brother live in New South Wales. It's pretty hot there. <laughs> it feels like weather like there. From Hobart's Sandy Bay Beach to the Devonport Bluff, thousands opted to spend the scorcher by the water. It's just nice to get in the um, beach because it's just so cold because you, you can be cold and then you, you can get in the water, then you'll be cold, then you can come up and then you can make sandcastles and then you get hot again and then you can go back in the water. It was a group idea, like it's just all impromptu. We're just like, hey, we're going down the beach. Same, we're all going down to the beach and maybe like a minute set up with the tents. It was like, up, oh, done. From playing cricket to building sandcastles, those on the beach say the sea breeze brought much needed relief. I like the hotness, but then it's way too hot to like be nice. Like it's really hot. And for those in Launceston not wanting to travel in the heat, the basin was also appreciated. The water helped to keep you cool today. Oh, it's been beautiful here, just lovely. Fantastic day for a swim. With temperatures soaring right across the state today in the UV extreme, the damage the sun can cause was also on the minds of those trying to keep cool. I don't want to uh, get um, cancer or anything, that's all we've got some sunscreen here. Um, yeah. With temperatures predicted to return to the 20s tomorrow, the hottest day for the year so far appears to have passed. Jessie Gilmore, 7 Tasmania News. To the day's other news now, and a 20-year-old man has fronted the Launceston Magistrates Court over an alleged high-speed police chase on the Tamar Highway yesterday. He faces a string of charges, including stealing, breach of bail, evading police, dangerous driving and drug-related offences. Police are urging anyone who may have witnessed the incident or who has dash cam footage to come forward. The man was remanded in custody to reappear at a later date. Meanwhile, a 20-year-old Clarendon Vale man has been charged in relation to an armed robbery at a Hara bottle shop on the 29th of December. Police say a firearm used during the incident was recovered during their investigations. Public assistance is being sought to identify a second person involved who was riding a smaller capacity road bike and wearing dark clothing and a full-faced helmet. It might be a new year, but an old fight over pay and conditions is continuing. The Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation today announcing it will continue its ban on elective surgery at the Mersey Community Hospital, despite pressure from the Tasmanian government to seize the action, which started on January 1. Our members don't undertake industrial action lightly, but they feel that they are being pushed into a corner and they have to continue escalating industrial action. So the government comes to the table, puts an offer on the table that will not only retain our current nurses and midwives in Tasmania, but enable recruitment for the future. The state government says its offer of a 6% pay rise over three years, along with improved terms and conditions, is fair and that the union work bans on elective surgery is reckless and will undermine patient care. This year's Taste of Tasmania has proved to be the event's most popular, seeing a record number of visitors walk through the gates. The week-long event wrapped up in high spirits last night for its 30th birthday. Dismantling stalls as the vibrant venue gets packed away, marking the end of the state's largest food festival. Everyone is really proud of themselves and rightly so. Uh, everyone invested heart and soul into this festival and it's, uh, everyone worked extremely hard on this festival. Um, so there's a great sense of achievement. Celebrating 30 years since the first culinary extravaganza. A record-breaking 260,000 people visited 112 food stands and events. 
the rainbow carpet and giant entrance, just some of the new features attracting the crowds. It's been great to see the community, um, both internationals, interstaters and locals, have a completely new relationship with this festival uh, and celebrate its 30th in style. The annual event is a platform for local food and wine producers to reach out to the public. This event is just the most incredible opportunity to build that allegiance between food and, and, and produce and beverage and our overall Tasmanian brand. It's all the people that came through, so many people wanted to chat, so many people had such rave reviews and positive feedback or even, you know, people had questions and wanted to learn more. It was, it was awesome. And next year's festival is looking just as positive. I've started sketching out what next year's program is going to look like based on some of the successes that we've had this year. And I think lifting the bar every single year is a really important thing to keep a festival vibrant. Ruby Kamein, Seven Tasmania News. Ahead of tomorrow's Hobart International, Romanian tennis player Mihaela Buzanescu has spent some time getting up close and personal with some native creatures during her visit to Tasmania. The number 24 world ranked player reached the finals in last year's tournament and says she's glad to be back in the state. I'm really happy that I had a chance to come here today and explore some of the wild things. It's just the atmosphere and everything is really calm and peaceful so I'm, I'm feeling really, really welcomed and uh, um, in a good mood all the time. The tournament runs until Saturday the 12th at the Domain Tennis Centre. Now a look at the day's business and finance use, news thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has shrugged off some of its earlier losses, but fears of a slowdown on China have continued to drag on the local market. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 14 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 70.22 US cents and 75.95 Japanese yen. For the first time in more than 40 years, the National Laser Championships have set sail on the northwest coast. For some out on the water, the dinghies are a stepping stone to the Tokyo Olympics, while for others, it's a way of staying young. Goodbye and good riddance to dry land. <laughs> the tide's ripping, eh? As nearly 150 laser boats beat the breeze on Bass Strait in the vessel's national championships, demanding strength and a sound mind during the solo missions. Although it may not go fast, you have to sail it quite physically. Um, yeah, when the wind picks up, it, yeah, it gets quite hard to sail. It's a challenge Matt Wern relishes. After winning a silver medal at the Sports World Championships in August, he's racing here in preparation for the Tokyo Olympics. This qualifies us for the World Championships, which is obviously a major event for the, the qualification for the Olympics. Matt's girlfriend Emma is one of the international sailors, having arrived from Belgium earlier this week. She's a world title holder and one of the clear favourites in the women's field, even though Tasmanian waters are something new. I've been told that it's like a, a cold place, so I was very prepared to pack winter clothes, um, but we were looking at the forecast and it was actually glamour conditions, so um, yeah, I'm very happy, I'm loving it. The scene of white sails is a lot busier than the last time the lasers came to Devonport in 1977. Local sailing legend Clyde Eastall raced in that series. He says they were a lot harder to use back then. In those days they, they were I guess like an FJ Holden almost they, and they didn't have a lot of gear on them and they were very strict in terms of what you could and couldn't do to them and now you know they've become international, they're in the Olympics and you can catch a glimpse of them in Devonport until Tuesday. And the Launceston Tornadoes have signed their first import for 2019. American Stephanie Gardner will join the side after finishing her current contract with a Swedish club. The 26-year-old point guard has played across Europe for the past five years and says she can't wait to come to Tasmania. Good evening. As we heard earlier in the news, Campania recorded 40 degrees today and that was the warmest around the state. That's 15 degrees above average. Hobart had 34, Launceston 31, Burnie 23 and Devonport 24, Bushy Park and Ooze 38 degrees, Flinders Island 37, St Helens 35, Friendly Beaches warmed up to 33 today, Grove and Strawn 32, Lyawini 29 and King Island 27. Some low cloud moved over the north and northwest of the state this morning and a little developed over the east later in the day but not much to talk about. A low centre over the Southern Ocean has cloud pushing towards Western Victoria. 
Onshore winds gathered cloud over southwest WA and the monsoon trough active over the tropics. Tomorrow the cold front will be to our east. A trough slices through the nation from the northwest and a ridge of high pressure continues to build over the bight. Tropical cyclone Penny continues to sit over the Coral Sea. Westerly winds at 20 to 30 knots around the state tomorrow, easing during the day and later over southern waters. Lighter winds over the east coast with afternoon sea breezes. Strong wind warning from Tasman Island to Sandy Cape and also for waters from Stanley around to St Helens Point. Tomorrow for Hobart, partly cloudy. We drop down to 22 degrees, 19 the top for Medina with a shower or two and partly cloudy for Oatlands, temperature 20. 24 for Launceston and partly cloudy, 21 the top for Devonport, little cloud for Lyawini and 15 the high. Burnie, partly cloudy and 19, 19 for Strawn with a shower or two, same sort of deal for Marawar. And for St Helens, a morning shower clearing, 22 the top, 23 for Swansea, partly cloudy for Orford and 22 degrees. The UV very high for Strawn but extreme for the rest of the centres. On Sunday, showers over the west and far south, fine elsewhere. Morning showers over the southwest on Monday, a 50% chance of a shower in Hobart. Light showers again for the southwest and possibly the east coast on Tuesday. Sunny and 32 in Perth tomorrow. There it is, partly cloudy in Adelaide. A cooler day with a shower in Melbourne. A possible storm forecast for Canberra. Showers developing in Sydney and a cloudy 31 in Brisbane. Cooling down a bit in Hobart, partly cloudy and 19 degrees, still 26 in Launceston and partly cloudy, Devonport 21, a bit of cloud around as well. And that concludes the weather on our first day of working together, Louise. And uh, unlike all my other days of working, this has been an absolute pleasure. I'll take that as a very big compliment, Mert. I hope it's been lovely to work with you too. That's all your news for now. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.